Welcome, welcome. Thanks for returning uh, today. I'm Cheryl Schmidt from Cheryl Schmidt Artistry. And as you can see, I have three images uh, laid out on my canvas. I haven't decided which one we're going to work with yet today, but we're going to be creating a steampunk, industrial steampunk canvas uh, using one of these images today. Uh, if you're new here, a very special welcome to you. I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other videos. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back to spend some time with me today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and uh, like button down below. And if you hit the little bell icon right beside it, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So let's get on with today's project. I have a very uh, old and dirty canvas here. As you can see, it's got stain on it and stuff. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm going to start off with some uh, regular matte gel medium to adhere down some lace onto my canvas. So I'm just going to smear some gel medium down like that. And we're going to lay some lace in there, push it down into the glue. This lace has a natural curve to it. It's um, uh, an older vintage lace. So it's gonna kind of do its own thing. Anywhere that it's not sticking, I will just pick up a little bit more gel medium to put down. And I'll even come right over top and lay that lace, or that gel medium over top of the lace. I'm going to wrap it around the corners. I like to have um, a texture even on the sides of my canvas. I want stuff stuck in there. Nice, that looks good. And again, over on this side, a little bit of gel medium. And wrap that lace around the corner and stick it down. And put another piece of lace in here, about there. And again, I'm going to wrap that around the side of my canvas. At the end of the day, I'm not sure how much of the lace is really going to be visible once we're all done. I just want some texture. Um, that's why I'm using this. And I'm not worried about um, having that gel medium on there super thick um, because I'll be putting a layer of gesso over top of everything anyways. I think that should do it for that. All right. Um, now I want to, uh, on the bottom part, I want to put some texture in here, kind of a brick wall texture on the bottom. And I've got crackle paste. And I'm just going to load up my spatula. And my crackle paste was starting to dry out. I hadn't used it in a while, so I just added some, some water to it and tried to work the lumps out and reconstitute it as best I can. And so the, uh, the clumps that I have um, I'm not too concerned about them. They'll actually add some extra texture in the, into the into the brick. Load up a little bit more here onto my spatula. Now 
I'm not even worrying too much if my uh, stencil happens to move a little bit. I don't need things to line up 100% perfect. All right, so I'm gonna need to run that in and wash that right away. And then just because I can, I'm going to take uh, some molding, some regular molding paste. I'm going to take a baby wipe and clean off the scotula. And use just some regular, uh, just regular molding paste. Just for a little bit more texture. So I'm going to just pat it on as though I was icing a cake almost. So I'll smear it and then I'll just um, put my spatula into it and make some texture. I'm going to do that along the top here. Put some in, spread it out, and then just bring my spatula through there just to can you see, see that textural? And I'll do that along the sides as well. One more side to do and then I'll leave this for a few hours here now to dry and set up and once it's dried and set up I will be back and uh, walk you through walk you through the next steps again just making sure that that lace gets laid down in there I've got a little bit more up here on the top I'll just Run that along. And I'm just making sure that lace is stuck down good on the sides. All right, so I will return once this is dry and we will get on with the next step. All right, so everything is, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, everything is dry. Got a few crumbles that just came off. Bring this in nice and close. You can see all the texture and the bricks actually even have some cracks in there from that crackle paste. Lots of texture on all the edges. Everything's, everything's dry and ready to go. I'm gonna move you in just a little bit closer. There we go. So now I'm ready to start um, designing my canvas. Uh, yesterday, I think I had showed you um, these three images. I cut them out um, and I was trying to decide which one I wanted to go with. Uh, I don't really like how hunched over this image is, so I r have set her aside. Um, and I'm not fussy on how yellow this image is, so I've gone with this this image and these images are all from graphics fairy i'll leave the link for the for that uh, down below so i don't want her quite in the center somewhere around there so at this point now i'm going to um, start setting stuff on my canvas and kind of uh, designing what i want uh, to to do most of what I'm going to put on here at this point is just going to be um, stuff that I'm going to gesso over and then I'll be coming in with some um, uh, other metallic pieces after that I don't want uh, uh, colored or tinted because she's got blues and um, blues and pinks in in the uh, in her dress I'll probably do blues and pinks in, in the colors for the canvas, but I haven't decided on that. So at this point, I'm just going to start designing. I won't be talking a whole much. Um, I'll probably even just speed speed this up um, 
as you uh, see me put everything in. And I'll be using my hot glue gun again to adhere everything in place just because it uh, sets up really, really quick. So I will be using my Art Alternatives White Acrylic Gesso. I'm going to make sure everything's glued on, nothing's coming off. I don't have everything adhered, like the stuff that's going to be under the picture. I don't have that glued down exceptionally well because the picture will be hiding it. And I'm using just a coarse bristled brush um, like that. And I'm just going to dip into my gesso and basically I'm going to pounce my gesso on rather than brush it. This is going to give lots of texture to everything, but it's also going to allow the gesso, allow me to get that gesso down inside of everything. And by putting that gesso on, I'm camouflaging um, the hot glue, any hot glue that's seeped out. Um, the gel medium that we used, uh, gel medium doesn't take a lot of uh, sprays and distress inks and stuff very well so the, the gesso will allow for that. Um, and also the gesso kind of as it dries um, will help adhere things down a little bit as well. Um, because you know acrylic paint as it dries uh, will act as a bit of a bonder as well. All right, so you get the idea. You can see what I've just sewed up here in this corner in relation to everything else. So I'm going to go and do that and let it dry. And once that is dry, I will be back to start adding on some colors and stuff. So I will see you um, in just a few minutes, um, but it'll probably be several hours uh, worth of drying time on my end here again. All right, so this is all dry now, and I want to start putting in some color. Just got to make some room here around my desk. So I've picked um, salvaged patina, kitsch flamingo, broken china, picked raspberry as my colors to work with. And i got to move move stuff out of the spray radius here. So let's start, uh, and I've got both the spray stain and um, the uh, oxides in some of these colors, uh, just because I like the chalkiness of the, of the uh, oxide sprays. So I'm just gonna start by just lightly misting. I'll build up the color profile in a minute. The picked raspberry is just so much more vibrant, which is something I really, really like. And the broken china as well is just so nice. And, oh, and of course, I got the one with the broken pump. All right, there we go. And let's get some more of the patina in here. Loving those colors together and loving those colors uh, against that photo. So I'm going to dry this quickly and then um, I will add, <clears throat> add in uh, some more colors and stuff here. All 
want to take some of that color and just run that over onto the onto the outside edges here of the canvas. dried a little bit and you can see now that I've got some of the sprays on there can you see the texture and the crackle in that brick and of course with distress sprays and stains you um, uh, the stains and the oxides you you build up your layers so each each pass will give you a little bit of a different look and feel. And here is where I want to come in with some of my oxides now. Make sure with your oxides you shake it because it's got the pigment in there. It needs to be mixed a little bit more. Like I said, I love the chalkiness of it. So that was the uh, salvage patina. Now I'm going to do the Kitsch Flamingo. And again, we want to dry that. Alright, so I've dried that as about as much as I want to with my heat gun. I'm going to leave it now to finish air drying, uh, mainly because the crackle pastes, the molding paste and stuff like that, it'll only tolerate the heat of the heat gun for so long before those mediums will start to bubble and react to the heat. So I've got most of the puddles um, have been been dried. So I'm just going to give that uh, give that some time to just finish air drying and once that's air dried I will be back. All right so it's for the most part dry. There's still a few little damp spots here and there but nothing nothing too much to worry about. So I want to come in and I want to kind of um, grunge it up, dirty it up a little bit if you were. I've got some deco art and some Inca gold um, metallic um, pastes. And as you can see this one's really quite dried out. I'm just going to spray some water in there. And I do put a fair bit of water in this one's dry, drying out as well. And so let that water just sit in there for a minute. And I'm going to start with the um, iced espresso, the darker one, um, and just just hit those those edges of the embellishments. Just kind of. I want to, like I said, I want to dirty it up, grunge it up, kick, kick that uh, the brightness of the the colors back a bit, grab some of the texture in that brickwork. Bring it in through that lace. The main thing is, is I'm just hitting kind of all the. Uh, the high spots. I'm not not really working it down into the into the crevices or the valleys at all. So 
So if you don't have uh, I don't have a product like this, you could just use uh, like just a brown paint or a copper paint. Um, and again, just just put a little bit out on your work surface. Use your finger to grab the the paint and rub it over your your project. can see all those gears and everything that we stuck in there much more. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I don't think I want to bring any of the gold in. I like that this has more of a dirty copper look and feel. Run that up and down the edge of my canvas. just like I said it just it just brings that texture out all right so now I'm gonna plug in my hot glue gun again get ready to adhere down my image and some extra embellishments so I will return momentarily all right so I've got things laid out Kind of where I want to glue them. I'm undecided about these leaves. I definitely like the one down here but not so much the one up there. So like I said I've got my glue gun heated up here so we're just gonna use our glue gun to get everything stuck back down. I'm using my glue gun just because it dries instantly and uh, I do like that you get a little bit of dimension from the hot glue so things don't necessarily uh, sit flat. So what do you think? Is this something you might try? Have you been thinking about doing mixed media before but unsure where to start or how to go about doing it? Do you like the colors that I used? When you think mixed media and you think steampunk or grunge, what colors do you do you think of when you um, think of that? encourage you to think outside the box and don't uh, you know so often I think we think things have to look a certain or be a certain color in order for it to qualify in certain art um, genres and I don't think that that's the case I think I think it's important to uh, experiment and try something different. You might be surprised what you create. Helps if you make sure you've got everything pressed down into the glue. Like I said, I do like this leaf, so I'm going to uh, just leave that there. And then 
put a little hot glue in behind my picture. I still want to put some extras in. I've got a bunch of these little um, gold metallic rings. They um, are actually punch outs from chain mail. I ordered them from a chain mail company. They're the, the leftovers, the floor sweepings, if you will. Bring those in and use them to hide some of my Hot glue spots. trying to decide if I still want to put some flowers in here or not. I do kind of like the idea of having a few little florals. I'm really hoping I don't end up regretting that to be honest with you. But I like having those little flowers kind of right in the center of some of the gears. As you can see, some of my gears aren't sticking real well, and that happens um, sometimes with the uh, on all the distress product. It's not quite dry, um, and I get impatient. So, <laughs> so I may still hit those flowers with just a little bit of color. Flower, where should I stick it? Maybe I'll stick it just right there. All right, so like I said, I want to hit those with just a little bit of color, so I'm going to put a little bit more water into my metallic paste here, and then I'm going to because I don't want those color those flowers to be the same color as the background. Um, so I'm just going to edge them with the metallic on the tops of their petals. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Now I know mixed media and steampunk and grunge and all that stuff isn't for everyone. All right, I want, uh, I think I still want to come in with a little bit of my, uh, so I've got some archival ink and my blending brush. I 
and I'm going to just I want to kind of age and grunge up that that edge almost it's almost like putting on a on a border there and of course I thought I had saw oh yeah, that moved it's a fine line between putting just a little bit of hot glue on so that your uh, your embellishments hold and putting so much on that it it squishes out and I don't don't want to see gobs of that hot glue right oh yeah see I like that it gives it that that frame so I've got some of that brown in there I think I'm also going to do a little bit of black so I'm going to come in with the um, Jet Black Archival Ink now. And just... Yeah, sometimes you just need that, that black or that dark color in there just to anchor the eye. And this black has a little bit of a blue undertone so it really uh, works well with, with the colors of the canvas. That's what I needed. Okay, and then I'm going to just hit all that chipboard and the stuff that I had inside. Even these leaves, I'm just going to hit them with a little bit of black ink just on their outside edges. And uh, just age that up, grunge that up a bit. Dull that color back. I think that's uh, where I'm struggling a little bit with this canvas. I really like what I've created. I'm just finding it maybe a little bit um, too bright, too intense for uh, for the look I'm after. So I'm just uh, ever so lightly uh, just hitting hitting the high high spots with my. Um, Uh, brush here just knocking those colors back just a little bit yep, I there I think I am happy with that now what do you think what do you think and like always I will have close-ups of this project um, at the end of the video I will leave links um, to the products uh, down and below in the description box. And I'm just going to distress the edges of my picture a bit here too. Perfect. Awesome. So until next time, I hope you uh, have a great rest of your day and that uh, you'll find some time to get into your, into your craft room and create something. Bye-bye.